doing it badly, what's going to happen is no matter what the circumstances are, you're not going to let that discourage you or quit. And the fact that you don't let it discourage you is the thing that's going to allow you to keep getting up and keep laying bricks. And one day you're going to look up and because you laid bricks when it was nice outside, you laid bricks when it was foggy, you laid bricks when it was rain, like you just laid bricks regardless of what was going on because you wanted it that bad, I promise you, you're going to have it. But I said it, but I want to say it one more time. You're not failing because of the circumstance or situation. You're failing because mentally you let the circumstance and situation make you stop laying bricks. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just want it all. Do you know what it's like every day facing your fear? But believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like growing up broken than most? But still being devoted the most. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, that's what the journey's about. All right, what's going on, y'all? This is Justin Owens, your host of the Run and Play Show, where I help break down the top plays from top leaders, entrepreneurs, and personalities by sharing their gems from their personal playbook. And miss, listen, I'm honored today because I got the one and only. He's the number one motivational speaker in the world. He took the world by storm, literally since I was a kid, um, and is the best-selling author of the book You Owe You. I got a great friend of mine, mentor. Uh, Dr. Eric Thomas. We know him as E.T. How you doing, bro? I was going to say E.T. <laughs> <laughs> I say E.T. Yeah, but I'm sure my mom would like all of that yeah, stuff. Nah, yeah, no, man. Nah, I appreciate, yeah, first nah. of all, I appreciate you for uh, for coming here. Yeah. Um, I don't take it lightly because I know you probably get a lot of calls and you can't say yes to all of them. Yeah, I say but, no to most stuff. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying <laughs> yes to this one. <laughs> so, listen, I got, I got to ask you a question because okay. I've always uh, wondered this, you know, even as I was like, Young as an entrepreneur. Yeah. I know you talk about like waking up at three o'clock in the morning, yeah. four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So what time do you go to sleep? That's what I need to know. Like what So it changes, right? Okay. Cause so like, let's just say in the summer, the sun doesn't go down in Michigan, believe it or not, till like ten. Wow, okay. You yeah. feel me? So I'm a, I'm a nocturnal creature. So <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not a nocturnal so I end up going to sleep like, you know, um when the sun goes down. I'm like, I'm not in, I'm not an owl. So I'm yeah. gonna so usually the sun go down at ten. So maybe about 10, 30, 10, 45, but in the winter, I I could be in the bed literally 8, 30, okay. 8, 8, 30 easy now. Wow. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So in the winter, like, in the winter, I like for the sun, I'm like, I, for, I'm not nocturnal. So I'm one of those guys where it's like, once the sun go down, I'm that's it, I'm done. But as long as there's sun, I'm up, I'm at it. So, yeah, yeah winter, 8, 30, 9, I'm watching TV, me and D. Summer, I'm not watching TV. <laughs> we working, doing whatever, yeah. walking, playing, having a good time, taking advantage of the sun. Yeah, I, I love that because I'm like a night owl. Like, okay. I get a lot of stuff right. done at nighttime. Right. And I was like, man, sometimes I go to sleep at 12, 1 o'clock. No question. I was like, man, okay, I got to Yeah, no this question. But, but, you know, it's not the, you know, because everybody thinks it's 3 o'clock. And, again, I'm not saying that the 3 a.m. does not have its privileges. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the privileges for me, because I'm not really a very demanding type of person, I'm yeah. very accommodating, yeah. for me it's difficult to get anything done 8, 9, 10, because especially as a pastor, people yeah. are constantly calling me. Now, I'm not strong enough to shut people down. Yeah. So for me, getting up at 3 for almost 20 years, that three to seven, you know, the kids would get up and go to get ready for school about 6.30, 6, 6.30, yeah. leave about 7.30, you know, whatever. So for me, it was like, yo, here go three, four hours of undivided, you know, attempt. Like nobody's caught, nobody's bothering me. So I think for any human, if you can find that time where you get four or five hours where it's like nobody's disturbing, nobody's bothering you, but it was just difficult for me. The phone's going off. Right. You know, I tell people literally, you getting up at 3 o'clock and you going walking, you know, and talking to the Lord, there are no cars are moving, no animals are walking around, no dogs are yeah. barking. Like, bro, it's nothing but you and the black sky, you know, and the stars, yeah. you know? So that's that's really the secret, you know, behind <laughs> I it. I wondered that because yeah. I'm like, because then you said doing it for 20 years. So, like, yeah. that, okay, because yeah. consistency comes to the play. Yeah, no question. Okay. So, how, how have you been able to be consistent with that in, in really other areas of your life? Like, how does that how does that come? I, you know, I, I think I'm a true believer of, you know, 30 days, mm -hmm. 
you know, it becomes a habit, you know, yeah. 45, whatever. So I just think, like, my body, like, CJ will laugh and say, we can go out of the out of the country. He's going to get up, whatever <laughs> his 3 o'clock is. And, and I don't intentionally do it. Yeah. Like, my, I don't know that my body knows the clock, yeah. you know, in, in Dubai, yeah. you know, Australia. But some kind of way I've just been doing it for so long, I'm programmed to do it. And if I don't do it, I, it doesn't seem like I have the same – productivity right. that I would normally have. So for me, it's like, you know, a football player, a basketball player, you know, a soccer football player. Yeah. It's like you start doing these routines. And I'm going to be honest, I truly believe that, yep, you may get, be gifted and talented, but I believe that routine over a long period of time, like you said, yeah. that routine starts to give you some benefits that have nothing to do with, like, your particular skill set or yeah. talent. It's just routine uh, like it's like what's the term they use in business? Um, um, uh, e exponential growth. Yep. Uh, what's the other Compound one? Compound interest. interest. Yep. It's just like routine yep. along with your five dollars. You know, turn into a lot. You know, turn into a lot. Yeah. So, so that, so that consistency, that routine. I think DC Young Fly said persistency as well. Yep. He like your consistency is important, but persistency is the ability to be consistent. Under pressure. Yeah. yeah so, right. so yeah, that 3 a.m., it worked for me. I'm not telling nobody to do it. I'm just saying it, it worked for me. It yeah. made me number one <laughs> in so, the world. And I, I know we've talked because you, you said, like, that's a time for you to get a chance to talk to God yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah. So, what, can you maybe shed some light in? Because I'm really big on, like, having spiritual, yeah. you know, growth and yeah. routine. Can you maybe share a little bit of, like, your spiritual routine? Yeah, I, I want to share, too, why I think it's so important to be spiritual. Mm hmm and, and it ain't on no religious stuff, but it's like, yo, I try to explain this to people. Money has its benefits. Yep. But, like, money isn't, and people try to act like money is the answer or solves every problem. Yep. Like, yo, it it has its role. And if you're in capitalism, <laughs> it may, you know, yeah, it, sure. it, it may be a little deeper mm -hmm. than maybe in other parts of the world. You know, but I believe money, you know, I believe in mental and emotional health. Yep. You know, uh, I believe in relationships. I believe in purpose. Mm -hmm. And I believe when you combine all of those, it's super powerful. Yeah. But the spiritual part, I think, is it's like a wild card yeah. when you play, you know what I'm saying, Uno. <laughs> yeah. It's like a wild card. Yeah. It's like, you know what I'm saying, like, you don't never really know when you're going to need that joker. Yeah. Or you don't really know the power. It's like a draw four wild card. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It can change the color. It can change everything. And so for me, an example I always say is like, DD getting MS. Yeah. Well, of course, having insurance, you know, and having um, access to, you know, good doctors, yeah. but at the end of the day, they can't go in our brain and change the diagnosis, but God can. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, man, I just think spirituality is so important. So uh, here are the three things for me that's really spirituality. So first, I feel people who know the creator they know love in the way that most people don't know love. For sure. Yeah. You know, most, most, and I feel like I have a relationship with a lot of you guys, and, you know, whatever you guys call me, I think it has a lot to do with, like, yo, E ain't looking out for self. Yeah. Like, E seem like the stuff that he's doing is really to benefit us. So when you start talking about spirituality, it's a love, and when people feel like you love them, not you trying to take them for, or you trying to get over on. It's just uh, the relationships are deeper. Yeah. The you know the opportunities are like get off the plane. You got a car yeah. waiting for me. Like, e, we're gonna yeah. take drop Didi off. She needs some food. Whatever. Yeah. That's that's that that doesn't happen in just transactional relationships. Sure. So so number two, when you're dealing with the creator, for me, it's a it's this gratitude yeah. that you get. It's yeah. like. You don't, you don't go what I don't have or what didn't work. You just constantly in this space of God, thank you for this and thank you for that. And DD MS could have gone this way, or this could have happened to Jada, Jada, or this could have happened to Jalen. Like I'm not with my kids 24-7. You protected them. And I think the final one in spirituality is this thing about like serving others, yeah. you know, and really making sure that, you know, I was telling somebody today, yeah, I've been to Dubai. That's why I sent. Um, a church members, and then that's why I just sent 12, 13 kids. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like I got a chance to experience it, mm -hmm. and what, what spirituality does is say it's not just about you. Yeah. I blessed you. Now I want you to do for others what I've done for you. So yeah. I think that's what makes um, – that's the significance of now. You can't take a prayer to the gas tank yeah, yeah. and, like, yeah. Lord, please put <laughs> – 
30 gallons in my Suburban. You can't do that. That requires money. But I just believe that in, in Western thought sometimes, we feel like money will solve every problem, and it, it has its place, but it definitely you know, is not um, uh, 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 omnipotent. omnipotent. Yeah. It's not omniscient. It, it has its purpose, but it can't do all things. Yeah. So I have a question because, like, I sometimes I know people, they've asked me, and I just want to get I want to get your perspective on it because when you're having that time with, with you and the mm -hmm. creator, mm -hmm. how do you know it's God talking to you? Mm -hmm. when, you when you're trying to find an answer, when you're trying to find a, a solution to something, because, you know, sometimes you get all kind of thoughts and stuff coming in. How, yeah. how have you been able to identify in your life? You know, all right, this is God, thank you. So a couple of things. First, if you're going to talk to God, limit talking to people. Hmm. You know, it's like, why go to God and ask him that I'm coming to ask you? Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Jeez. now you got multiple <laughs> voices and now you're confused. Yeah. You know, somebody told me the other day, I was watching this lady and she said we should do X, Y, and Z. And she was looking at me like, why aren't you excited for me? God, I said, now listen to me very closely. I'm not discouraging you, but as your pastor, I'm not encouraging you to come to me to hear from God. Yeah. I'm not encouraging that. Yeah. He made you. He can talk to you. He doesn't need. That's like you telling me, hey, E, uh, I'm going to ask Didi something about you. It's like, yeah. what would you talk to Didi about? Yeah. You got my number two. You can call yeah. me. You know, and so I think that's the first thing. The second thing I think is for all of us, if somebody said to me, bro, first of all, I know your voice if I pick up the phone, I got my eyes closed. Mm -hmm. You're not FaceTime. You're just talking red. Bro, if you're talking regular, I know your voice. Yeah. But more importantly, I've been around you so much, I know your voice. Wow. So I, I know if somebody said, oh, oh just said, hey, oh, no, don't worry about it. Go and pay for your own Uber. <laughs> and then he'll, I already know yeah. that's not something that you would that's not something you would do. Yeah. Or if we're doing something, you're not going to be like, I'm about to manipulate E or take advantage of E. Yeah. So I would already know if they said, hey, he said you get 3% and he gets nice. Bro, that's not, you feel me? And so when you're around a person long enough, you know their voice, but you also know their intent. Wow. And so if you've been around God for a long period of time and you're in the word, it just, it, you know, Didi, <laughs> I said to Didi the other day, I, I know better, but we were went out to eat, and it was the new year, so it was like maybe January 2nd or 3rd, and I was like, D, you think we should still do a $100 tip? Yeah. You know, that's something we did in 2020. Like, every yeah. restaurant or we tip people, we always give them $100. And she was like, do you want the same blessing that you got from giving a $100 tip wow. in 2022? Mm. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I'm also, I'm also embarrassed that you would ask me that, and that, and I'm embarrassed that we still just giving a hundred after what we've seen happen <laughs> after giving a hundred. Wow. So why are we still giving a hundred? Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. So yeah, for me, man, um, yeah, man, you just gotta, yeah, you just gotta be with him, around him, reading the word, be around other people that's in his word, yeah. and 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 yeah, you'll 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 know his voice if you're yeah. around him. Or not. That's big. Is, is you gotta kind of choose who you who you talking to yeah. about it yeah. to, to make it clear. Yeah, you you are a person that I've realized is amazing with relationships. Yeah, what is um what has helped you with it? So it's gonna be two part question. Okay. Well, what has it helped you with that? And then two, we're both very nice people, right? right? So how, right. as a nice person, do you not get taken advantage of inside yeah. a relationship? So I'll start with the first person first. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no question. <laughs> how, yeah. how have you been able to develop yeah. relationships over time, long term? Well, well, first of all, because, and I said it earlier, when you, when you are with people to help people, you automatically separate yourself from your average person. Yeah. Average person is like, you know, super manipulative. Mm -hmm. They look at you as... You know, I, I read something the other day that says, you know, most people don't want to be with you because you're you. They want to be with you for what they think they can get from being with you. Wow. You yeah. feel me? Uh, and so when you come to people and you genuinely care about them and love them, you're going to have a whole bunch of relationships just yeah. because you, you, you're you rare. You're yeah. sacred. Mm -hmm. Like most people come for what they can get. Yeah. I, and I know people are going to they're going to challenge this. But the reason why I have never had to manipulate somebody or something is because I'm talented. Yeah. I'm just gifted, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm too talented to have to rob you, <laughs> steal from you. Yeah. Like I'm too I'm too talented to come in your life and destroy your life. Like I'm too talented for that. Yeah. And then I often see it as, man, if I take care of Justin, I want the benefits of our relationship to outlast me and to go to my great great grandkids. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like I I I want my grandkids to be able to walk in the room and just like, yo, ET 
that was your grandfather? Yeah. Oh, hey, pay for they, hey, whatever. It's on me. What y'all say y'all need it? Yeah. I got y'all. Yeah. Like, that's how I see it. I want, I don't want our relationship when I pass and you guys got another 30, 40 years to just be like, oh, E.T., what? I want y'all to be like, oh, you you know E.T., oh, you is cut? Okay, I got you. Yeah. The second one is, although we're nice, we don't, Act as if everybody is us. That's a fact. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you just got to know. Yeah, I had to learn that, too. Th they, they not us. Yeah. Like, they're not cut from the same mm -hmm. cloth that we're cut from. And if we're doing business, then our friendship shouldn't even get in the way of business. That's a fact. Because yeah. it's business. Yeah. So we ain't, it's like, hey, E, I got a contract. Just sign. No, it's business. Let me see the contract. Yeah. Now, I don't, I'm not reading it thinking you trying to get over on me, Correct. but I do need to understand what the contract is saying. Yeah. I need to understand what I'm going to get, mm -hmm. what I'm going to have to give up. Like, I need to understand that. So, for me, I don't go into relationships thinking you, I, I'm thinking you're the majority. Yeah. And because you're the majority, I do have to set up boundaries. Yeah. And I do have to set up timelines. Yep. And I do have to cross reference. <laughs> and I do have to test you. Yeah. To see what, how you respond when I, I was like, oh, no, I can't, no, I can't yeah. trust you. And I, I just had a recent relationship, man. I felt so bad for this individual because they was like, E, I want to be down. I'm like, okay, bet. But as I was listening, it was me, 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 me. And I was like, oh, no, you're not ready because when you roll with me, I can't have you looking at just like, oh, I'm with E, and I done got you in this space, yeah. and now you sizing them up on what can I get? Now you making me look bad. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I, I test I test people. Um, CJ will tell you he worked for free for a year. Yeah. You know, Carl, maybe more. See, probably <laughs> say more. Carl Moore, yeah. Lashana Moore. Yeah. And, they, and I did because I had to know you're not doing this to get paid. Why? I can pay anybody. Yeah. I can give anybody a ways to do this work. I need to know that you're really about this life. And how do I know? When you don't get a check for 48 uh, weeks, is that what it is? Yeah, 50, 52 weeks. Or uh Oh, yeah, so months. Yeah, oh, yep. yeah, yeah. 48 yep. yeah. months yeah. to see if you're serious. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you're serious at, yeah, yeah. You, at that point. And I would see. see <laughs> 48 months. Yeah, 48 months. Yeah, because 24 months is a year. Yeah. But 48 but, months was no, my thing. 20, 12 months is a year. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so. Yeah, so they was about, C would say three. I don't think it was three years. Okay. I think it was 24, I, you know what I'm saying, 24, somewhere in there, 28, yeah, yeah. somewhere in there. He'd say 32. I, but, but no, they went a while working for me and not getting a real physical check. Hmm. They really did. And now, of course, they killing the game. Yeah, so, all right, so that, that's a good question because it's like, there's some people, they have a hard time keeping the team when they pay people. Right. Right, so right, let, right, right. <laughs> right, can, can you talk about, it's, it's, it's two things I've actually seen with you that I think is really special. One is you've been able to keep a lot of the same people around you. Absolutely. And then two, the people that are around you, you also let them have the ability to do their own thing. Absolutely. Which some people don't let people oh, yeah. do that. I'm so talented. They, yeah. I'm gifted. <laughs> I'm not. And again, for real, when you're not talented and you're not gifted and you're not spiritual, you're insecure. Hmm. And, and, and insecurity is not the place of overflow. I'm not saying you don't make no money when you're insecure, but you don't get into the Martin Luther King, the Malcolm X, the girl. Like, you don't get into the, the those realms when you, you got a group of people around you and you constantly watching them. And that. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I welcome you to leave. Yeah. I'm just asking that you would raise somebody up and leave them for me because I blessed you and now I want to be a blessing to them. Yeah. You know, so for me, I was able to keep C in the squad. And, bro, that's our greatest accomplishment, really, mm -hmm. is that we still together. I mean, we don't – I don't want to go here because you start naming people, people get offense, sure. offended by it. But we know some great, you know, in, in sports, in entertainment, and mm -hmm. business, some great tangents that end up splitting up. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, my greatest – now, why, why am I able to keep CJ in him? Because I always knew money of all the benefits is the lowest of them all. I agree with that. It's yeah. the lowest. Mm -hmm. So then what we're going to focus on is, you'll see, what do you need? And I can get you what you need. I don't always got to give you a paycheck to get you what you need. Yeah. So I know that CJ was super close with his parents, me and his dad like this. Mm -hmm. I married his oldest brother. I married CJ. I married the youngest. I'm the godfather of his kids. <laughs> me and his father still super. His mom, we travel. Bruh, it, train works for me now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Run the nonprofit. So for me, it was like, Carl, what do you need? Carl had my truck, bruh. 
for probably about a year just driving that Joker because we had two vehicles. So yeah. I was trying to share with Dee Dee, and Carl had my. There was never something that they needed that I wasn't there for them, yeah. and so they knew. Yo, E is level layer one. My mama, layer two. My brother, and sister, layer three. You know, uh, my grandma died. He at the funeral. You know, my cousin, something happened, he'd go to jail. Eric, at the, using the lawyers, he know, trying to help. So it's just like, yo, bro, I, I did what, I did the I did the hard part. And that's relationship, love, serve, don't have ill intent. And, bro, when you do that, that'll keep you together, man. Yeah. And trust. Yeah. It's like, yo, see, whatever. I mean, you read the book, so. You know, my little life, I had my little my mama didn't tell me who my real father was. So yeah. I, I got to work through some stuff, yeah. you know, back in the day. But still with C, it's communicating yeah. and just saying, yo, see, this is how I feel. Like, I don't think that you would do anything, but I feel some type of way because I'm used to communicating and talking and we going out. And you got these other dudes you're going out with, other dudes you're doing whatever. Like, can you help me to understand? And he like, bro, we trying to blow you up. And make, oh, okay, good. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, but I want to be in an environment yeah. where I can, as a man, be transparent. Mm -hmm. And I can, as a man, be vulnerable and say, yo, I got trust issues. This is what I'm dealing with, bruh. And he man enough to say, well, I'm not going to take it personal that you didn't trust me because I ain't never gave you no reason. But I do know your father's situation. I understand. And that's how we stay together, man. Just communicating, being transparent, being real, bruh. Yeah, no, nothing in people's heads. Where you thinking for months and, and years about your boy, and now you have turned what's in your head into a reality. It's like, no, nah, if I feel it, say it, get it out, mm -hmm. and then we can we can work through it. Yeah, I love that. Did you get yours yet? You know, the uniform for entrepreneurs all across the world, New ACOs. Go to newacos.com, make sure you get your uniform, make sure you get your gear, and represent all around the world. Because you know, we, we probably talked, what was the last year, maybe maybe over the course of two, three months about relationships yeah. and understanding personality yeah. types. And yeah. I think that's a, it's a, it was a game changer for me to yeah. understand the way that yeah. you taught it. Yeah. Because you start saying that there's so many things that could be fixed if people just learn how Absolutely. to communicate effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what has changed for you, like, since you started diving into that and studying personalities and, and how to communicate with people? You know that nobody else is me. Yeah. Or a small group of people look at the world the way I look at the world. Yeah. You know, 30 percent. And then there's 70 percent of the world that don't look at it. And then there's a combination of people who have some of my similarities, but they don't have my similarities. You know, and so just understanding that, E, everybody not looking at the world the way you look at it. Everybody doesn't see it the way you see it. And you can't think that they're inferior or you can't think that you're superior because you think the way you think. And you yeah. can't think that the way you think is always appropriate. Hmm. Like, it's not always appropriate. And I'm telling you, when I've seen in marriage or business, people who don't share the same skill set come together, it, bruh, it's, it's a game changer. Yeah. But i also seen when those people come together who have differences, how those differences can destroy or divide us. Yeah. So it's like, no, why would you, if you were guard, why would you draft guards? Yeah. Okay, maybe one more. Mm -hmm. But why would you have a team of guards? Yeah. You know, but of course, if you had a center, he's not seeing the game from the same angle or lens. And so that's what I've learned. And I've learned when you value people as they are and you don't try to force them to be what you want them to be, but you love them where they are, understand them, let them know you value it and you need them. Man, we've been able to stuff that before. I'd be like, bro, why are you so, why are you asking a million questions? <laughs> yeah. You're getting on my nerves. You got all these questions. And it's like, no, I was talking to a guy the other day who's me, and his spouse is, you know, very inquisitive, mm -hmm. you know. And he was like, bro, why she got all them questions? Like, she don't trust me. She don't. And I said, no, 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 no. The way you're able to be observant and piece stuff together, and as a result of piecing stuff together, get the outcomes you need, she needs to ask questions to get those same outcomes. Wow. She's not observant. She don't see stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she asks questions. So if you really want your wife to help you take your business to the next level, you won't be offended with 100 questions because 100 questions mean, oh, we about to put a strategy and a system together. Once I can understand who you are and where you're coming from, boom, I'm about to put something on paper that you ain't never going to have to start all over again and be all spontaneous. 
I'm like, yep, I see why Moose asked all of, I see why my wife asked all. Now I'm sitting back like, ask me, please. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got some questions that help you get more questions. And then boom, once Moose understands it or my wife understands it, and so I've learned we're all different, but we all trying to get to the same place. But how we get to that place is different. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Well, that it's something that is important, but I, I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs don't really take, you know, pay attention to it. Yeah. And I like I think even like like spiritually, like in the Bible, like in Genesis where they were building a the tower, yeah. and said God came down and confused yeah. the language because yeah. uh anything was possible. Anything. And so it shows it's like, man, what that tells me is if people can communicate and be on the same page, anything is possible. Anything. And so when you understand that, it's like, well, why don't more people spend more time? Because we've been taught that money is the goal. Hmm. So everybody puts all their energy into making money. Yeah. So, But if you really knew that, we're not teaching that. Most of us are not even on the spiritual level or like it's all religion for us, not spiritual. We're like, we really read. I get so frustrated with, I don't care what your belief system is. When you know what it is and you're not really doing it. I get so far, I'm like, yo, if you are a person that, you know, studies the Bible, you shouldn't be broke. <laughs> like, there's no way you can actually read the Bible yeah. and not see that God has given you a gift that's going to make room for you. Yeah. And you need relationships. You need money. You need um, uh, physical resources, material resources. Like, you can't put money in the ground and it grow, but you can't put corn or you can't put, you know, whatever in the ground and it'll grow. So, so for me, I understood from reading the Bible, yo, if you could get some people on one, if me and C can get on one accord, yeah. yo, if me and C Carl could get on one accord, bro, do you understand we had a video that was over 100 million hits when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, and we were working at Michigan State University. C wow. wasn't getting paid. Carl wasn't really getting paid. Mm -hmm. I got them internship, what you call them, sorry, um, a graduate assistantship, so they was getting you know small checks from that. But, bro, we were literally in a small room at Michigan State University, and we were changing the world. Wow. Well, we were walking to go to the grocery store to grab sandwich meat to eat like that. We was eating sandwiches every day mm -hmm. and chips and drinking um, uh, pop, bro. You know what I'm saying? But we were all on one accord. C said it. Okay, I'm the head. Ease the, uh, ease the mouth. Carl's the hands. Wow. Like, bro, we knew we were on one accord. We knew, yeah. Carl, you do all the videos. CJ, you do all the strategy and branding. E, you open up that mouth and you go love on people. And and I knew when I walk in the room, don't be touching cameras. Yeah. Don't be looking in the room like I should put this in. No, you go in that room, boy, and you you shake every hand, you hug every baby. You look everybody in their eye. You make everybody feel loved. And we were literally on one accord. And, bro, we taking the world by storm now. I feel like I'm a billionaire because of all the lives I've touched and all of the people who use the inspiration to either become thousandaires, millionaires, multimillionaires. So I, so I feel like, yo, I'm a billionaire. Yeah. And I don't, so for me, money is not the only qualifier. I don't go, I'm not a billionaire in terms of assets. No, I am a billionaire in terms of assets. If you look at humans as an asset. Right. So if you look at humans, uh, I'm, 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 I might be, <laughs> on my way to trillionaire yeah. because of the millions that I've helped in whatever area. So I don't let people tell me, well, you don't have enough homes or enough cars to be a billionaire. No, I'm a billionaire. Yeah. If you trace all the humans that whatever listened to God through me on a video and it inspired them to do whatever they doing, yep. bro, you got it. <laughs> like, Hey, I'm like Bill Russell. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he was shooting threes and doing all that. They just wanted <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they, they had statisticians. Fact, you yeah. feel me? Yeah, don't say that he did. Don't say that um, MJ or Bron them scored more than they just weren't. They 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 weren't keeping track like that. Yeah. And I know I'm a billionaire, but I also know I live in a world where they don't keep track of souls. Yeah. Where they don't keep track of character. Mm -hmm. Where they don't keep track of emotional and mental health. Yeah. They just look at stuff. As a person is successful, and I look, I said, bro, I go head to head with any financial billionaire as a change billionaire. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I go head to head. That's a fact. Any yeah. day, bro. Yeah, because yeah. you know, any any arena you step into, the, it's instant. You know, I've, yeah. I've seen I've seen audiences, people come up stage and it's dry. Yeah. As soon as you yeah. step up there, it's like yeah. the, the impact is yeah. felt. Holy Ghost. You, you've done something that's been, you know, I think is is unique also because you've started to reach out to, you know. The, the next generation, yeah. which is which is my generation. Yeah. And I'll be transparent, there's not a lot of people that are before me yeah. that have ever tried to reach back and say, hey, yeah. 
let me let me reach out to you. Let me let me try to help you. Where what does that come at? What does that come from from for you? Like to to say, you know, let me reach back and, and try to help these young gentlemen. You know, get get to the next level. Well, first of all, you know, I don't have a choice. Uh, I'm attracted to greatness. Yeah. You know, and y'all killing the game. Yeah. And appreciate you too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, y'all killing the game. So I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, E, I'm a lover of the game. You know what I'm saying? So how you go, how you not going to uh, uh, value and appreciate the people that has that taken the game and all the stuff that, you know, shoot, my ancestors when I was coming up, 70s baby, Martin Luther King had just got shot and killed, X just got shot and killed. So all you heard was Hey, we got to do this and we got to do that. And now y'all living what they were dreaming. Yeah. You feel me? And I, and I, and I'm not going to lie, I've been able to um I've been able to some extent enjoy it, but a lot of mine has been you know the Martin Luther King and then the money. Like you guys have been blessed to get what we have we we've earned yeah. for so t- for a time now. Yeah. So from a business standpoint, you guys are killing it. So for me, I'm sitting back watching y'all and going, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yo, this is dope. Like, they out here killing it. Yeah. And then the second thing that compels me is they are out here killing it, and I don't want them to build on sand because I've seen so many people in this game who have made the money and gotten the attention and lost it all. Mm. And I'm like, man, they were the first generation to get some of this stuff and didn't have anybody to teach them or whatever. So for me, I, like you said, I'm picking up the phone. I'm praying with Dez. Yeah. I'm praying with y'all. I'm praying with B. Simone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm calling. Who, whosoever will let me <laughs> call or whatever. I'm like, hey, I love what y'all doing. Y'all killing the game. Um, and, and however I can help and be of support, you know. And so you guys have taught me a lot, though, man. You guys have taught me that, um, you know, it's okay, you know, to um, – Make money, you know. It's okay to enjoy it, you know. I, I would have never d- bought Didi or Rolls Royce if I wasn't around <laughs> y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because just where I come from, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where I come from, like before me, my, that generation would be like you, whatever. Like yo, y'all live in, yeah. y'all, you know, y'all, bro. I went to a resort, a private resort, spent like five some G's a day. I would yeah. never do that. Yeah. I saw, y- I see y'all enjoying life, and I'm like, yo, yo, we can do both. You know, like where we grew up, it was like. <laughs> That's a sin, you Back know what I'm saying? Like, you sinning. Yep. And it's like, no, first to the house of Israel, then the other most parts of the world. Yep. God wants us to enjoy, you know, this earth because this is where we are. Yep. It's like everybody trying to get to heaven. It's like, bro, you got to pass the pop quiz. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got to get the pop yep. quiz before you can get to the test. So, yeah, man. Yeah, y'all are, man, amazing. And the fact that y'all would embrace me is a blessing. But then I just want to protect y'all as much as I can from some of the evil that comes with celebrity and money. And, you know, man, you see it even when you are here. People see you as whatever and coming after you. And I'm like, and so you got an enemy as well, that's spiritual that's coming at. And I just want to be able to be there, man, to help sustain. Like, I don't want, I don't want y'all to do this for 10 years, 20 years. As long as y'all are alive, I want y'all to be be on top. Like, I don't want this to be you saying, man, I remember when I yeah. I remember when I put yeah. up 52. You remember that night we yeah, put up? No. I want you to yeah. say, oh, yeah. Oh, that night we put up 52. Oh, yeah, I just put up 59 yeah. Yeah. last night. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I want I want y'all to preserve it, and I, I want to do my part to help in that process. Yeah, no, I, I definitely appreciate that and the impact you continue to make. Um, it's, it's been pretty special. Have you had to change your, your message, you feel like, for mm. the current generation? Uh-huh. I had to get a Rolls Royce. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to get a Rolls Royce. You know, one of the things that I realized about this generation is, and they, the Bible says they will know you by your fruits. Yeah. You know, and this generation wants to see some tangible fruits, yeah. let's just say. Yeah. Let's yeah. call it what it is. And so, yes, I've had to, and, I, and I'm thankful for this generation because they have forced me to be more multidimensional. Mm-hmm. Like I always felt like I was multidimensional, yep. you know, maybe mentally, emotionally, spiritually, family, relationships. But but they have forced me to say, hey, I want I want y'all to see I'm playing at y'all level. Yeah. And now I want to invite you to this level. Mm-hmm. You know? So so they have made me, you know, um do masterminds. Like I wasn't necessarily into yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't my thing. But it's like AE, 
bro, we doing masterminds, E. I'm like, yep, you right. I need to get out of here. And then, hey, E, we, you know, we at the state for free. Okay, I, you know, I'll be at an old church. That's yeah. gonna, like, yo, E, we at the state. Like, E, you need to. And so, yes, and, I, and that's what I'm so, I don't look at that as a, you know, like, I had to compromise. I really looked at that like, yo, y'all like, yo, bro, E, if you're going to be in the game, I don't care. I don't care wh what you was doing 10 years ago, 20 years ago. That, I mean, when you look at a LeBron, I, so, you know, people always E.T., you know, you, Michael Jordan, you know, whatever. I will say this, bro. LeBron ain't nobody doing it at the level that long in the yeah. – he look like – bro, he look like he was when he first started the game. Yeah. You know, so if you want to talk MJ, you want to talk LeBron, I mean, uh, Kobe, whoever, nobody – at, this, at 20 years in the game, was still playing. And so I look at LeBron, and I look at that. He playing. I'm here. I'm watching. I'm looking at what LeBron is doing, and LeBron and this generation is putting pressure on me because it's like, yo, MJ might have been wearing number 45 with the Wizards, and a lot of what we were doing ah, was the nostalgia of what he was back in the day. Mm -hmm. He wasn't necessarily – Number 45 playing at 20 years at that same height. Right. I look at Bron, and Bron's still. And so I'm saying, E, you can't be in this game. Nobody care you did when you want to succeed yeah. as bad as you want to breathe. Like, you got to keep up. Like, you can't if you can't walk with the foot, you can't keep up with the horse. <laughs> so it's like, E, you got to keep up. So, yeah, the message is we need to go get what's ours. And, yep, we need to enjoy. Yep, and, yep, yep, we need to go after. But in all thy getting, get relationships, yep. get character, get meaning, get purpose, yep. get get it. While you getting, go ahead and get it all. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I appreciate something about you too because, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name any names because I've been okay. a student of you know, right. speaking right. well. Right. But right. you know, there, there are some speakers that have been evolved, right? Right. And I've noticed, at least just from the outside looking in, you've you're still doing what you do speaking wise, but you've also Diversify it yes. business wise. Yes. You know, yes, so I watch you guys. Thank you. I watch you guys. <laughs> yeah, but can, can you explain it? Because there, there's a business side yeah. of what you do, but it's also yeah. like, okay, but at the same time, yeah. I, I I want to, you yeah. know. Yeah. Because there, there are some speakers that, like, you could, like, you won, you know, Tony's got his business Absolutely. side together. And I was like, okay, yeah. but then there's some that's like, okay, I just used my voice and that Absolutely. was it. And it's like, man, that's all you, that's all well, you do. Well, I'm you like, know, and again, like I said, you had that mad respect. For those people who've gone before you, Tony's always been yeah. about stewarding and capitalizing, maximizing, leveraging yeah. his time, you know, uh, when he first started, you know, the books and the, mm -hmm. just all the stuff that he's done. So, of course, for those of us who are in the game, you know, we look at Tony and we get an opportunity to say, hey, we could do it this way or we can do it the way that some others have done it. And yeah. so for me... You know, when you're looking at the best, bro, you want to be the best. Yeah. You got to do what the best are doing. So I looked at his example and was like, oh, okay, he's not just speaking. Yeah. You know, he understands that speaking is actually could be the lowest hanging fruit. We talk about money. It's yeah. the lowest hanging fruits. So I started looking within my gift and saying, yo, what are businesses that you could start to come natural? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned it. Uh, for me, I absolutely love the disc yeah. assessment and flipped it in, on his head yeah. and turned it into the flight assessment, yep. the pilot, the flight attendant, the air traffic control, you know, uh, the grounds crew, flipped it on his head. And now instead of just going to speak to corporations, we're actually partnering and using that tool wow. for them to help their employees go, oh, this is my skill set. Yep. If I'm going to sell, I got to sell like this. I can't, you know, everybody, I want to, I'm a lion. Like, bro, everybody not a lion. Yeah. Like, everybody's not aggressive. Everybody's not demand. Some people will support their way mm -hmm. to millions. Yeah. Other people will demand their way. Mm -hmm. Other people will relationship their way to. Other people will structure and system them, their way to. Yeah. So that was one of the things that I was like, yo, no, you got to turn this into a business, mm -hmm. you know, where you have to have a tool, you know, you certify people, you sell the tool. You, you you have regular certifications, yep. you know, you have merchandise, yep. you know, your clients now get an opportunity to not only have you go, we're not just going to inspire, now we're going to go from inspiration to implementation, yeah. right? So now they get a chance, and now we get a chance to make money together. Yep. It's like, oh, oh, we see the benefits of this mm -hmm. tool. All right, we take this percent. These are our people. You take that percent. So, you know, we're, we're going to have it in the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, so I'm just saying, you know, like, for, yeah. to your point, I, I, I said to my children, hey, when I go, the assessment, you know, Dale Carnegie 
in the 50s yeah. left us. And he still has one of the most successful leadership. So, yeah, man, I, so many, like you said, different things, but we're going in that direction. Yeah, absolutely. You got the book, first yeah. of all. Yeah. This was actually one of my favorite videos that you did. You ah, know, you yes. Like, I, like yes. the ending part, yeah. I was like, yes. like my dad was in yeah. my life, but I still yes. love that part. I like, <laughs> like, I was like, I play a little golf, but I still love it. Yeah, you, it's supposed yeah. to like yeah. all the yeah, all yeah. The you knew what I meant too. I wasn't, I no, wasn't no, dogging golf. I, 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 yeah, I, I was like, yo, I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Like I played yeah. it so many times again yeah. through so many things, and you know now the book is out. And even that, yeah, business. Yeah, like it's like take the video, and turn the video. Into a stream of revenue, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. New York. And now I think you were telling me it's over a hundred thousand. Yeah, 10, with, with the second print, because because here's book. the deal: a lot of people make the New York Times bestseller, mm -hmm. but they don't ever get to see it on their book. Oh yeah, Facts. you feel me? Because yeah. they don't get a second print. Wow. So they may they may you know kill a game, yeah. but they may not be in demand where wow. they have to reprint it. Yeah. So we I, we were geek when we saw it on the <laughs> reprint, like yo, we made it, mama, we made it. So to your point, man, and I say in one of the chapters, um, and I'm gonna let you figure out which one it is closer to the end. Yep. It says I'm a business man, yeah. and of course that line comes from Jay Z, Z yeah. and talking about being a businessman and again. Jay Z is another person yeah, that we. Not a business, yeah, man. I'm, I'm a businessman. Business, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So <laughs> we get a chance to yeah. look at the greats and what they're doing, and we get an option to say either we're gonna look at their model and and duplicate it, or we are gonna hate on it. Yeah. And I I chose to honor those guys, study their stuff, and say thank you for what you taught us, and let me do the same thing for. You know, for my children. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I, I got a question for you because it's like, you know, I know a lot of people that are tuning in are new entrepreneurs. They mm -hmm. got gifts. There are times where you you may go speak for free. Maybe yeah. it's a school. Or, yeah. And it like, I, I always have a battle sometimes. Like, okay, when do I charge? Mm -hmm. And when do I do something for free? Like, yeah. have you ever? Have yeah, you, no question. Okay. I charge when you making money off of what okay. I'm doing. <laughs> there you go. You making money off what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm going to a prison. You ain't making no money off of me coming in yeah. there. Wow. So so if you making money off of my gift, I want to make some money off my gift. Wow. You, I, I'm just That's saying it's just fair. Yeah. You I, you making money, I'm making money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying yeah. Your staff about to go fired up. They about to go work in a way they've never worked for for however long that inspiration stay on them, and which is up to you because yeah. we got. Programs that you can buy to keep as long as you want. Yep. They're going to go and perform at a higher level, yep. and that is going to take your brand to another level. And economically, it's going to take. I need to get something for my gift. Yep. But if it's a you know prison or low performing school, and they just like they ain't got no budget, and they really don't. And I'm in town already. I'm about to go up to the school and be a blessing again. You you there's a blessing that comes with getting paid, and there's a blessing that comes with. Sowing a seed, and you have to understand. And when I say you have to understand, I'm talking to you. There's some fruit that God gives us that we eat, but then there's seeds that He puts in the fruit. Those seeds are not meant to be eaten. Mm. So, uh, so when God gives you a blessing, a major portion of that blessing is to be consumed, but He leaves seeds inside of that blessing for you to plant so that you can get more fruit and be more of a blessing to others. Wow. And some of us are eating the whole. Yeah, eating the whole thing. We driving the whole. We wearing the whole. Yeah. We, we, yes, you're supposed to enjoy some of the blessing. Yeah. But there are parts of the blessing that God did not create for you to consume. It was created for you to plant. I love that, yeah. And, and it sounds like you you probably had people that have done, tried to take advantage of it on, on, on the other side, too. Both sides. Yeah, because yeah, I've, I've had yeah. I'm like, listen, now, yeah. now you got to pay this time. You got to pay. You got to pay this time. Yeah. It's, 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 and you got to pay right. Yeah, this for time. sure. You got to right. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like, failure is a thing that a lot of times people try to avoid. Um, you know, a lot of times people realize it's a part of the process as you go along. Have you had any failures? Because, you know, you look at the world, like, E.T. just been, it's yeah. like, everything's been great. Um, but are there any failures you've had? And if so, I always have a, a, a segment I like to call like a, a breakdowns or breakthroughs. Like yeah. maybe you had a breakdown and you were yeah. able to get through it, you broke yeah. through and you, you went to another level. Yeah. Every single phase of life I've gone through, I've been a failure. I've been a failure as an individual, meaning I set these goals for myself that I didn't accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been a failure as a son. I've been a failure as a husband. I've been a failure as a father, mm -hmm. as a preacher. Like I can think of every single area that I'm dominating now where as a student, bruh, like I literally dropped the ball. And so I, tell, I, I would tell everybody this, 
you are always going to be a failure when you first start something. Yeah. You don't know it. You're new to it. But don't take it personal. Take it as a part of the... Bro, people say to me all the time, they try to tease me, it took you 12 years to get a four-year degree. I actually see that as a blessing. Like, yo, you know, most most people would have quit after four years or eight years mm -hmm. or 10 years. Bro, I didn't quit. Yeah. And so here's my deal. I believe that you should develop, and the development is what's going to make you number one in the world. Like, it's my fair. Like, bro, just be real. The world ain't. And watch my videos. I talk about it all the time. But the world is not going to draw closer to you because you had a silver spoon in your mouth. Yeah. It is actually your failures and how you manage to get through those that's going to draw people to you because they're like, yo, I, I went through that in my marriage. Yeah. I went through that as a father. Like, I went through that. And let, and let me just be clear. I'm still failing right now. Yeah. Like, I still pay too much taxes. <laughs> I, I, I really still pay too much taxes this year. Yeah. And why? Because I'm still trying to get rid of the working mindset and fully embrace wealth. Yeah. Like, I'm still struggling with how my people and where. It's like, E, let that go. You wealthy, bro. Yeah. It is what it is. Embrace it. Take advantage of the tax breaks. But my mind is the last thing mm -hmm. that's seeming to catch up. I'm still failing in my marriage. My wife is still on some... You, you work too much. You go. You, you said we was going. You yeah. feel me? You 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 still too loud. You still talk too pat. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm still failing, but I don't see failure as the end. I see it as, and I'm not trying to be on no cliche and stuff. Like I really feel like it is meant to develop you. So who has muscles who don't lift weights? Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you lifting weights, whatever you start with. That's not what you end with. If you lifting 250 pounds, you weren't lifting that. And so I'm still failing. I've been a failure my whole life. But somehow I was able to do what only few of us are able to do. And that is to figure it out in failure. Hmm. I, 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 I'm, I'm able not to figure it out. Before yeah. I quit, I gave up. I ran. I, you know, I felt sorry for myself. How did I do that? Why did I make that mistake? Like now, I'm like, no, 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 E. This is a jigsaw puzzle, bro. This is a Ruby Cube. Figure this thing out. Yeah. And when we learn how to figure out failure, man, so many people are going to be drawn, you know, to us, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. So, because so, that's that was actually going to be my next question. Like, how do, how do I figure it out? Because it's like, yeah. yo, you got to order this badge you want to breathe, but I'm yeah. suffocated right now. Yeah. Like, what? like yeah. I, so now, like, okay, I don't have the money. I don't yeah. have I don't have any of the things that I that I need in yeah. my mind to, yeah. to be able to get things done. Like, how have you been able to, okay, look, I'm failing. But this is still moving me forward. When I want to, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to break. And listen to me. Here's what I mean by that. For most of us, we want to succeed as bad as we want to breathe when we're above water. But when we go underwater, we forget we want to succeed as bad as we want to breathe. Hmm. And it, 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 it's not the it's not the trial or the tribulation of the person. Because for each one of us that have gone through something and failed. And quit and never somebody got through it. Yeah. So I'm trying to explain, y'all, when DC Young Fly said persistence, I'm like, yo, that's I need to post that. Yeah. Like that's what I haven't been saying. Mm -hmm. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, means that no matter what circumstances you're facing, you want to succeed as bad. You want that thing. Yeah. So you're not going to let failure or you broke or you're not gonna let any. I read a, a scripture today. First Kings um, 17, I think it was verse maybe five or six, bro. It's crazy, bro. It said that God told Elijah, go to the widow woman. Widow me, you, yeah, you lost your husband. You lost everything. Go to her, for I have anointed her to give you water and give you morsel. Mm -hmm. He gets to her. She like, yo, bro, I'm just trying to be honest with you. My husband dead. We ain't got no money. I can't give you no, I, bro, all I got enough for is today, me and my sons, to eat this, and then we're going to die. Mm -hmm. Th that's it. Yeah. And, and, and I'm looking like, what in the world? And Elijah said to her, instead of giving it to you and your son, give it to me, and you'll never have to work. And I'm sitting here going, hold up. God told Elijah that I commanded her. So even though she was a widow, didn't have nothing, yeah. God wasn't going you got it. She had no provision, no future. She had no fun. She had no man. She had nothing. And and, and he said, hey, I, she going to take care of you. God is saying that, yo, you don't need nothing. 
to, for me, but to know me. And she knew who he was. And so I'm saying, when you want stuff or you want a relationship, whatever, if you want it badly, what's going to happen is, no matter what the circumstances are, you're not going to let that discourage you or quit. And the fact that you don't let it discourage you is the thing that's going to allow you to keep getting up and keep laying bricks. And one day you're going to look up, and because you laid bricks when it was nice outside, you laid bricks when it was foggy, you laid bricks when it was rain. Like, you just laid bricks regardless of what was going on because you wanted it that bad. I promise you, you're going to have it. But I said it, but I want to say it one more time. You're not failing because of the circumstance or situation. You're failing because mentally you let the circumstance and situation make you stop laying bricks. Hmm. And, and you're not successful because you keep laying bricks, not laying bricks, laying bricks, not laying bricks. If you would just lay bricks regardless, whatever that thing is you want. And I'm going to be real. And Justin, can he can attest to this. Once you start laying bricks consistently and you never stop, I see people running in the rain when it's cold. I'm like, yo, those are marathon runners right yeah. there. These people don't care. They going to run. Like, they don't care what's going on. We will tell you that not only is it possible, it's past possible, and you're looking at two individuals that have gone way beyond what we – when we said we want to succeed as bad as we want to breathe, we way past whatever that meant to us. Yeah. We way past that. Like, mm -hmm. we're living in the – we in our wild dreams. We passed dreams. Yeah. These are wild dreams, wild dreams that we never could have imagined because mm -hmm. yeah. we didn't quit. Yeah, I love it. What, what's your favorite book of the Bible? Man, um, okay, two. Okay, so anything about Samuel and anything about David. Okay. My favorite. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Any yeah. one of those brothers <laughs> right there. Because especially David is, yes, God's like, he like a Hall of Famer in the Bible, yeah. but yet he wasn't perfect. Yeah. But he was a Hall of Famer, and he had real issues. And I know <laughs> you didn't ask me these questions, man, but I do want to say this to the people that are listening, because you said it. I'm a superhero because I know I'm not a superhero. Mm. And, I don't, and I'm not like one of those guys who, um, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm okay with my sins. Yeah. Like, I'm actually okay with, the fact that I bleed and I got challenges because I need God. Yeah. Like, like I have a certain brand of sin, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with, <laughs> yo, bro, this is my brand of sin. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is what I'm tempted by. Mm -hmm. I'm not sitting here faking it like I don't have any temptation. I'm not, yeah. I'm not faking it like I, I can't get knocked off my block. Like, I'm not faking mm -hmm. it like I don't. It's so funny that... When we hang with each other, like, see with me all the time. See will, like, okay, that's E. Brandis. <laughs> like, like, yo, bro, just like, it is what it is. Like, he with me all the time. You can't, he know. So I'm not walking around like the, the man of steel. I am actually weak, but in Christ, bro, I'm strong. Yeah. And in being transparent and, and falling and getting up the next day, like, yo, we about to get back up and try it again. Why? Because I'm not perfect and I don't, I'm, so what I'm trying to say is, I don't put that pressure on me, and I don't let people put that pressure. Yeah. E, you my role model. No, the God in me is your role model. I'm not your role model. Yeah. But the but the consistency, the persistence, there are some habits that I've learned how to do enough. I don't always do them, but I do them enough where it doesn't bring out the evil in me or let that weak Eric Thomas in me, the old Eric Thomas in me, let him shine. Like he don't come out enough where people recognize who he is. Yeah, we keep him in, we keep him locked in yeah. and on lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like in today's world, like because of what you're talking about, people are like marriage ain't for me. Yeah, you know, like that's yeah. just not my deal. Yeah. Or, like, but there are people that you know. I think marriage is an amazing, Absolutely. you know, institution Absolutely. that's been set up. Get any any tips that you seem to be able to make it work? Cause you, how long you and Didi been married? Thirty three years. Thirty three years. You know yeah. you don't hear that very often. Any, yeah. Anything that you've seen for, yeah. especially because you're a high performing entrepreneur. Yeah. And I actually I think it's a great example because there's some people in their mind they're like, okay, I want my wife to be building a business with me, yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah. And yeah. and Didi does and a lot of stuff. That. Yeah, yeah, but you haven't seen her do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you know sometimes people be like, oh, that's why I don't want to be with my yeah. person because they not yeah. doing. I'm like, no, nah, it don't have to be like that. Yeah. In fact, some of them be having they be having issues too. So yeah. like. Uh, Anything that you've seen in your your personal dynamic that may be able to help anybody that's watching? Man, you got to do what works for you. Yeah. You know, and I remember pressuring Didi a little bit, like, T.D. Jake's wife is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, oh, this T.D., like, you yeah. see his wife, you know, um, Taffy, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You see mm -hmm. Kleplo, you see, yeah. you know what I'm saying, Joel Osteen, yeah. like, you see his, you know, and I just remember Didi saying, like, yo, no, no, I, I'm not none of them. 
you know, and I don't want to be on camera and I don't want to. I remember, man, we were like early 30s, maybe yeah, early mid 30s. We had a chance to do like reality TV before mm -hmm. it was really. Real. And Diddy was like, no, we're not bringing no cameras in our house. Our kids are middle school and high school. Like we're yeah. not doing that. And at the time, I'm like, girl, this could like influence wise. I wasn't even on the money. I was more on like, yo, my influence can grow and then I can really spread love and, yeah. you know, whatever. And Diddy was like, nah, we, we we not doing that. Like, that may work for somebody else, but that's not. And so I would just say, one, I think the best marriages are with the people who are the best humans by themselves. You know, it's yeah. like you, you, you don't need. Yeah. nobody else but yet you need somebody else yeah. you know what i'm saying like you're not looking for that person to complete you but you are grateful that that person completes you and the thing i love most about didi is like didi is didi like didi is like you said you have never didi almost like tommy you don't really know yeah. what she does in this marriage you know yeah. what i'm saying like you know she do something because she's in it but but didi has always been like nope they do that like we're not keeping up with the joneses we're gonna keep up with ourselves and then I say the other part is, man, really learning to value the differences. Mm -hmm. Like, Didi, like, no, I'm not going, drop me off at the hotel. <laughs> I'm not, whatever. Yeah. But there have been times where we're not doing this type of work and we go grab something to eat yeah. and Didi's there. Yeah, so she's like, oh, if y'all going to eat, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> but yeah. that old podcast and being behind the camera, she's like, I'm not interested. And our relationship got so much better when I realized this is who Didi is. I actually don't need to be trying to manipulate her or force her to be something that I think she should be and let her be herself. And it's going the relationship is just gonna work out much better. And that's that's what it is. Didi, man, if I died, Didi gonna be all right. If Didi died, I'm gonna be both hurt, mm -hmm. but man, we have both succeeded in our own ways and brought those dynasties together. Yeah. It's like working with you guys, like you know, me and C, of course, was doing our thing, but when we hook up with Alex, bruh, mm -hmm. when we hook up with you, bruh, you know what I'm saying? Like, when we hooked up with Roy in the book, like, yeah. bruh, it's like, we could do so much more together. Earn your leisure, put us on, yeah. bruh, the book, you know what I'm saying? So, as we've been able to, I'm doing some work with Trap, we're going to yeah. the, the Louisiana to do some stuff. Bruh, when you can get two people, like you mm -hmm. said earlier, to be as one, it's magic. You could do a lot of good by yourself. But when you connect with another human and get on one accord and stop beefing and being selfish and self-centered, man, it's it's um it's it's amazing. And so being with Didi, I've been with her more than 33 years, been married 33 years, probably been with her 37 years in total. And uh yeah, I just think letting her be herself and valuing who she is and growing and developing together is uh you gotta, man, you gotta love that person for all their evil and all their sickness and all they I told somebody the other day, I don't love Didi because Didi stuck with me. I love Didi because Didi knows who I really am and stuck with me. Mm, yeah. You feel me? People, oh E, I love you. No, you don't. Yeah. You just love what you think about the positive in me. Yeah. Didi know the good, the bad, and the ugly mm. and still with me. Yep. That's how I know she loves me. Yep. You yep. feel me? Absolutely. No money, no fame, fortune, like, did he know the real E.T.? And all his glory yeah. and all of his filth. Yeah. Like, she know me through and through. Yeah. And for her to stay by my side and love on me and be whatever she thinks I need her to be to help me be number one in the world, because she'll be like, ah, and she's like, hold up, see, hold up, hold up, <laughs> like, no, 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 yeah. I can't let you. Mm -hmm. I, you wouldn't even have this version of E.T. if I didn't. Yeah. And so you need, man, you need, you need marriage, man, requires not abuse. You don't need no. You don't need to be with people who are gonna abuse you, but people who are gonna love you unconditionally. Yeah, now yeah. I love that. I think uh, I was listening. John Maxwell had spoken in an event that um, David had did, and he said, uh, th "How do you say?" He said, I, "I don't really care about what." He said, "I care, but I don't really care about the people that don't know me. Think right. about me." He said, "Do the people that know you the most love you the most?" Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, that's that's the truth because yeah. it, that's like that's what." You know, marriage is like the person yeah. that knows you in every capacity. Yeah. Do they still love you? Yeah. You know, whether that carries over to team, yeah. kids, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, I something I've been trying to work on is in this world, it seems like we got a lot of men giving women advice, right? And not a lot of men giving men advice. <laughs> right. which I, I guess right. maybe it's a better business to oh, give women advice because <laughs> way, yes. yeah, way better business model. Yeah, way better business model. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but do, do you have any advice for men that are that are trying to lead in their homes, in their families, with their kids, their spouse, um, that that could be beneficial for them? 
Yeah, that at the end of the day, bro, real success is you reaching your highest manhood. Mm -hmm. You know, money is good. Like we, it's a part of the society. You gotta have it. You know, but I think for me, having other men respect me mm -hmm. and whatever look up to me means, like, bro, men don't look up to men. Yeah. You feel most men like my daddy wasn't this, my uncles were that. Most me, you know I'm saying we grew up into it. When another man can look at you and get some type of value from you, especially when it has nothing to do with money or fame, just genuine, like, yo, bruh, like you. So to me, when I wake up every day, it's a lot of things I want to accomplish. But the more important one is, God, when you said, man, I will make man in my image after my likeness, and you brought me into the earth, what did that, what did, what was the character? that you saw when you saw me. And that's what I want to get to. I want to get to integrity, not lying. Yep. On my taxes, yep. on me and you having a conversation, my wife, yep. I want my phone to be, you can put the nut, like you can look through whatever you want. Look, I want to be real with my kids about, yo, I, so character, like consistency, like being a man of my word, honor, respecting our relationship, our friendship. Like yep. I want to be a man of honor. So for me, it's like, yeah, I definitely want to make money. I definitely want to, you know, send kids to do Bob Super Bowl, help kids academically do better, put kids through college. But at the end of the day, I want God to be able to look at me and go, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I believe if God can do that, other men will look at me and not go, oh, he perfect. He don't have no. Yeah. But like, yo, he was putting in that character work. Yeah. Like he was really trying to be who he said he was. And I think the thing that's so funny to me, I love the most. When I meet people, they're like, yo, you just like that dude on YouTube. I'm like, I am the dude on yeah. YouTube. What does that even mean? Yeah. But being in the industry, I have had an opportunity to meet people. And I was like, oh, yeah, no. Nah. Oh, no, nah, you not. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, nah, my bad. I, I'm sorry to even say hi to you. I wasn't even trying to yeah. get in your, like, I'm my bad, bro. If I would have known, I would have, I'm sorry. Like, I ain't even mean to come at you like that. Mm -hmm. I just thought you were. Yeah, the, <laughs> what we saw. I, the, my yeah. my bad, bro. I won't never disrespect you. Like you feel me? So I I just want to be who God wants me to be and who I claim to be. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. You, we were at the mastermind, and I don't I don't want to spoil it, but you said something like yeah. this. We were talking about money, and you know, especially getting it right as, right as entrepreneurs now. But you were saying that being spoiled was like a it was like a first generation term. Can you, yeah, yeah, can you yeah. expound upon that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause my my son. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and two things. One. You know, we we grew up where they were just coming out of the civil rights. So it was more, we just need to be grateful for whatever we get. Yeah. You feel me? Like, whatever opportunities that we have, we should be grateful for it. When I look at my son, my son is more like royalty. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like my son, and it was it was tough for me in the beginning because I saw that entitled spoil. But then I was like, hold up, either, either you're a royal priesthood or you're not. Yeah. Either you're a chosen generation or you're not. And I started looking at it more like, yo, I got to prep you to be spoiled. Yeah. Like, I got to prep you to be entitled. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you money to blow. Yeah. Like, I'm going to give you money to blow. Why? Because how else you going to learn how to invest and spend money if you don't ever get to play with it. Yeah. So we're going to give you money and you're going to play with it. You got to give some to a nonprofit. You got to give some to people in the community. But here, take this and when you spend it, we're going to go back and look and see if you did the right thing. Yeah. You feel me? So what I realized was like, yo, it it's only spoiling them if they don't learn how to survive and get it on their own. Yeah. It, that's that's what, what it ain't entitled if they really learn how to make money without so so I told my kids like hey me and your mom did all we could possibly do here's the last thing I want to get done if I die I need you to be able to go make your own money hmm. Jada I need you to be y'all got everything y'all got the church y'all got church family y'all got family y'all got degrees y'all know people in high places you know what people would call me everyday people who like love you and who change the world all I need y'all to do is, Jalen, how do you hunt? Let me help you. Jada, how do you hunt? Jada hunted by getting a master's, probably going to get a PhD. Yep. So she hunts in that structural system. Mm -hmm. yep. Jalen, entrepreneur, hunt. I'm like, Jay, I said, bro, it's 2023. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to get one or two checks by yourself that don't have nothing to do with me. Yeah. I need you to go get these checks. And here's the deal. If I live another 50, you ain't even got to, yeah. I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. But if something happened to me, 
you're going to need to go out there. So he's like, well, Dad, what you want me to do? Why you don't want me to? I said, no, no, I'm going to take care of you. Your job is to take care of the next generation. Mm -hmm. I got y'all on lock. I need y'all. And so for me, I realized, yo, it ain't, it ain't spoil. It's this is how kids who come up in wealth, this is what they, yeah. th they play with money. They get, yeah. to, they get to sit at the NBA lottery yeah. and pick for their mm. parents' NBA team, yep. and they get to sit there at 10, 11, and they get an opportunity to play what play with what they like going to be like one day. And so I was like, nah, bro, spoil your kids. Yeah. That's okay to be entitled. I don't, I don't think the royal palace, uh, Harry, it's, he's entitled. He's poor. <laughs> like, bro, yeah. you come into Buckingham Palace. Yeah. You get the uh, chauffeur. You get a cook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get uh, somebody who cleans the house. Like, that come with royalty. Yep. So, it's like, yo, get that to your kids. But my thing is just, Jalen, I don't want you to be around this and not get it. Yeah. I want you to be around this and be able to pick your, here go my gift, Here's how I'm going to dominate the world. I said, that's it. If you can do that, we're good to go. And I'm, I'm telling you, he went with some of my coaches, and they've been texting me like, yo, E, he right there, bro. Yeah. He right there. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. And I, yeah. I just go to bed at night knowing he, he going to get it, but if something happens to me, like he's on the path to getting it, and if something happens to me, it's going to acceler accelerate it. Yeah. But I'm like, both of them, they got it. They know the industry they want to dominate. They've, they're structured. They got their systems. They, they've got their procedures. They got their team. They've got the financial thing down packed. They 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 got their EPKs. Yeah. You know they got it. They know that they got their systems. They know. And so I'm 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 proud. But I would just say to parents, stop saying they spoil their entitled, and say they are trying to experience and play with what every child who's born in America and in a, in a place of wealth and opportunity should experience. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Because I, I think in the mess, you said uh, that being spoiled is a first generation yeah. term with people with money. Yeah, Because no it's question. like, we've never money, seen it before. They, that's how they always do yeah. it. It's not like, no, they, that's just what they do, you know? Um, but, and, but they might be 10 generate. You feel like they've been doing it for 10 generations, so it's nothing to them. Yeah. For a lot, you, my son, this is the first time yeah. money has been you know how many millionaires we got now, bro? Yeah. We we went from we went from sixty six billionaires in nineteen like ninety nine or two thousand to now we have over six hundred and six billionaires wow. in a matter of like ten years from like nineteen ninety nine to like two thousand and whatever, bro. We just skyrocketed. Yeah. yeah. Man, and I think I think what's important to, to to talk about too is for whatever reason, when you don't come from money, people feel like the only way to teach people humility is to be broke. The only way to teach them is that's not it. It's cause how do you learn to do it with, without having it? Because because I know people that were broke and they yeah. still don't have the quality. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So if that, <laughs> if that was true, you know. Uh, so I so I think I think one of the things that we have to continue to do, especially as we grow, is like what you were saying is all right. Yeah, we do have more than what yeah. most of us that even grew up around. Yeah. Uh, but we can still teach these principles. No question. And, and, and They're teachable. We learn them. Yeah. So we can pass them on. And we must mm -hmm. pass them on because this is what the ancestors fought for. Not just for you can vote. Yeah. But your vote can have power. Yeah. So you can be a person of intelligence. So you can move the needle. Like, that's what this thing is about. Moving the needle for whoever and whatever is important to you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Who, who would you call mentors today? Who would you, who would you call us, like? The people that somebody's like impacted or people. Um. Well, a lot of people impact me. Like I said, y'all mm -hmm. mentor me yeah. in that. Uh, I'm looking at opportunities that y'all have in this generation that we had 20 years ago. Yeah. And not going, well, I, I wasn't born when they were born. I can't. No, y'all showing this is an opportunity. Like, yeah. E, you can make more off stage than you can make on stage. Mm -hmm through these systems, yep. and you can do more for people by doing this. Come on. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Get on board. You know, so uh, you guys are definitely mentors. You know, I've been blessed, man. I've been blessed to, you know, uh, have like Dion look out. Man, Prime look out. Prime got the book, you yeah. know, in the videos. Mm -hmm. You know, Prime is, E, what you, okay, yep, I'm coming to speak. You know, Steve calls me, yeah. you know, E, man, you a mentor. He talk about me on the radio all the time. He just bought 200 books for the kids. You know, so I've been able to not only see people and go, ah, but I've been able to have relationships with people. Everybody know, you know, the relationship I've been blessed with. Uh, if you follow me online, Michael B. Jordan, yeah. always, mm -hmm. you know, so he gave me an opportunity to come 
you know, in his world and whatever, yeah. and bless me with some opportunities that that is going to elevate my, you yeah. know. So I've been I've been blessed, man. Um, uh, Chance and Tab, mm -hmm. you know, Toby, mm -hmm. you know, I look at what Kev on stage is doing. Like I said, B, Desi, DC, yeah. Young Fly, all, all, all of the just like this generation is killing it, yeah. you know. Um, and so I've been able to, you know, go to Toby's show, not as a mentor. But as a a fan, yeah. like as a student, and 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 somebody took a pic. I don't know how they got it, but it was a pic of me, and they were able to get me looking at Toad. I told you know at Fat while they perform. Fat from around the corner, bro. Wow. She from Grand Rapids, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I live in Lansing. That's a forty five minute drive, and I'm sitting there watching them, you know, to see C at some of these tables, yeah. and watch C do his thing, looking at Jamal. Jamal has mentored me. Even yeah. though he came to the college, whatever, Maul was like, yo, you you can have it all. You know, yeah. family, fun, <laughs> finance, whatever. I didn't have a will or a trust before Maul. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's weird, but sometimes the people you bless are the people that bless you. Hmm. You know, sometimes the people you yeah. pour into turn around and pour into you. Yeah. And so I've been blessed to have the internet and just get to see, man, um, Chris Powell was at Michigan State, CJ's roommate. Now he in comedy, killing it, doing his thing. Wow. You know, you look at Kev on stage, I mean, uh, Kev, Kevin Hart, and you look at, you know, Soul Plane and his first movie, and then how he stuck with this thing, and now you see where he is and what he's doing. Uh, Q DZ was on Fox, one, one of the best shows. Bro, it's just so many people that, I get an opportunity to uh, to see, and you know, of course, we miss names, but you know, circle of CEOs, bro. Like Neo was, bro. I was in yeah. Philly. Neo was picking me up in <laughs> Philly, bro. In the, in his <laughs> whip, crazy. not in one of these whips he yeah, got yeah, now. Yeah, sure he had a different doing. kind of whip. Yeah. He was picking me up and doing his thing. He was going to the different conferences and to see what he's doing now. I was with Alex when he, you know, had whatever life he had, and he was trying to make his transition from. You know, uh, um, um, not being successful in the business he was doing, him coming to a ship, and next thing we know, we working together. And he, you know, yeah. uh, telling me, "E, when you're in Atlanta, you can borrow the car." Yeah. And I'm like, "I'll pick up the keys." No, with my driver. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, okay." And come to the house and eat with the chef. And so, man, y'all have, you know, mentored me to see what Dion did with Jackson State and now mm -hmm. Colorado. And I know he's gonna be in the NF team, yeah. NFL team, one one of these days to see how he's raising his sons and his kids' life and how they're part. Man, it's just it's just so many people, man, are are my inspiration and mentoring me, bro. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and no, I love it. Um, I I know you have been doing some stuff with like uh, young men. Can you yeah. tell us about that? Like you, I, I think Super Bowl is one yeah, of the things. Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Are I you took, doing that this year? Or yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay. Oh man, I had to call in some of my GMs mm -hmm. from football teams, some of my A list football players, because Upper Bowl now is five thousand and some change. Wow. So last year I got tickets from like two. Five to maybe five, mm -hmm. but we took twenty five kids to the Super Bowl, and it's not about the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is, you know, a carrot. Yeah, they have to. Um, there are certain requirements for school and their parents that they have to do to qualify to go to the Super oh, Bowl. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's the main thing. Yeah, and then another group of kids they qualify and they go to Dubai. So we took a group. We took about thirteen kids, twelve, thirteen kids to Dubai, plus the chaperones. What an experience, man. Yeah. I haven't, that's one of the things I want to do this year. Super Bowl and Dubai. I'm, I'm gonna knock, <laughs> yeah. I got to knock both of them out. Let so. me know. Let's do it together. Yeah, let's, we got you know what I'm saying? Together. Let's do yeah. it together. Yeah. But I was fortunate. Uh, Natara got me into the Super Bowl experience years ago, and I did it. Didi and I went. Then one year, Didi was like, take Jalen. And as I was in there, I was like, man, let's take the family. And I was like, yo, we got to let other people experience this. Yeah. You know, so the kids, school is important. I don't mean degrees, just like – Critical thinkers and yeah. decision makers and comprehend. You know, a lot of our kids' comprehension level is so low. It's like you can't be no entrepreneur if you can't read and think yeah. and strategize and solve them, a problem solve. And so those were the the two main things. But yeah, man, I, I'm gonna send you a video of what the kids in Chicago said about that. Man, one kid was like, "No sirens in the morning." He was like, "Bro, we slept. We heard no gunshots, wow. no ambulance." He was like, "Yo, bro, this might have been the first time in a long time." I just slept, slept here. One kid was talking about all the cars that you see. Mm. And he was like, bro, in Chicago, we surviving. They out here thriving. Wow. And just to hear that terminology, yeah. you know, um, you know, blew my mind. So it's one thing to experience it. It's another thing to get to the level 
of wealth where you can help other people do it and see it through their eyes. Mm. You know, like somebody in poverty. Like Jay, like I said, he's poor. Jay, he's poor. Like, and by the way, our kids have never been to Dubai. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, even that is a blessing that it wasn't like they gonna go and you gotta go when they go, but they they haven't even been. But my kids have they they they're experienced. Yeah. So so sometimes when they experience an experience, mm-hmm. it's not the same as a kid who's mm-hmm. never experienced a, yeah. an experience. Mm-hmm. So to so to have never had, bro, some of these kids to go, they had to get birth certificates and all kind, like they ain't even had a paperwork together. Wow. You know, might have been foster kids or whatever, bro, homeless with their mom and yeah. shit. They ain't even had paperwork. Hmm. So to get paperwork to fly the first time internationally. In Dubai? That's, in Dubai. Bro, you, when you hear them talk about how their lives have been changed, and bro, we did it up. I'm like, order steaks. Mm-hmm. I'm like, God, train hit me. E, they trying. I was like, bro, I mean, you over there, but bro, whatever they want, give it to them. Why? Because I want them to be spoiled. Yeah. I want them to be entitled. Mm-hmm. I want them to come back to Chicago and go, I deserve, bro, I had them in the Latin's boy. I'm talking about the biggest water park. They were like, yo, people didn't think we belonged there. Then we came in numbers. I was like, eat at the fastest restaurant. I got them the executive lounge. I'm like, yo, I I want them to experience everything they can experience. I want them to come back and work harder than they've ever worked to now go on their own and then be able to take other people as well. I love that. Yeah, I love that. I, I'm gonna try. I think I'm gonna try to Super Bowl with you. With All you right, right, let's go, bro. Slide out. You don't know we only got a couple. We only got a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, February no. like 11 for some okay, 14 yeah, for something we'll, like that. We'll count, yeah, yeah, count me yeah, yeah. All right, let's go. With the Falcons, is it? Nah, no, no, okay. No. <laughs> All right, just saying. Maybe, I don't know. We we the coach, the coach ain't gonna make it. Yeah, yeah, and I don't Falcons know. Gonna make it. For the first time in a very long time, we're recording this right now, and the Lions haven't played, but they have a chance. To make it to the playoffs if they win, so we're gonna see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens, man. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. That, that's the that's that's really special. Yeah, being able to do that. Um, one of the things we always do in the show is, uh, you know, we like to give back in some kind of way. You right. know what I'm saying? So I know you and you and Didi like some food places. Yes, you know what I'm saying? we do. So, uh, yeah. Philly, you got you got that. that <laughs> yes, we do. Me, you know <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and then, um, why why she's doing that? Top top five athletes of all time. Who you, who you top five? And I'm not just saying this. You know what I'm saying? People are like, oh, you just saying it to be saying it. Prime time. Okay. Yeah. You know, prime time, bro. Um, Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Muhammad I. Yeah. Muhammad I. Barry Sanders. Yep. And uh, this one's tough, man. I, I got to say it, though. I got Walter Payton and Sweetness. I was going between <laughs> Walter Payton and maybe Megatron, but yeah. I got to go with uh, I gotta go with uh, Walter Payton, man, yeah, being yeah. from Chicago. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right, I'm yeah. going to ask one more, then I'm going to give right. you this. Right. The, right. the, 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 the work-life balance is hard for a lot of people. Is it possible? That's what I'm going to ask you. Is it, is it possible, or at least, because I what, what I've noticed and I've learned from you just listening to you talk is like even the way you talk about handling stuff with Didi, yeah. it's like at least it's there because there were times in my life where I was like, oh, whatever, man, I, I get to that. It works better it. when they're involved, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I, and I think that's a part of work-life balance. I think one of the biggest mistakes I made was doing things for Didi that never involved Didi. Hmm. And I, and I really, bro, I'm being real. Like, yeah. I really had a realization. I'm like, yo, what are you really doing for DD? And what are you saying you're doing for DD because it gives you motivation? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just being real. It's yeah. a motivator. Like, yeah. I, I, DD will never have to. Yeah. But it's like, is this really for DD? Mm-hmm. And if it's for DD, why DD don't know about yeah. it? You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, why is she not in the process? Mm-hmm. So I've, I've been communicating with DD way more, and I realize a part of work life balance is getting her involved. And a lot of times when people are involved, you don't have to give them as much time. Hmm, yeah. You have to give them more time when it's inadequate or I- insufficient. Yeah. But when people feel they are involved and they're informed and they know, a lot of times they can help you. So I'm like, yo, D, I gotta do Justin, whatever. And Didi like, oh, okay, depending on what time, all right, the plane is delayed. So now that I know, just drop me off at the hotel, mm-hmm. Don't worry about food or nothing. Our plan is to lay. We go grab a quick little yeah. sandwich in here. Yeah. Drop me off. When you get back, you know, praise God, the place we stand, they give you a little, because you diamond yeah. stands, they give you a little money to eat. Yeah. You know, so she's like, when you get back, we'll eat. We'll do room service and we'll chill out. But go do your thing. So 
just even informing her, I don't have to overcompensate because she knows, you know? And then here's what we do. I don't know if we balance, but we prioritize. Okay. So this season, Didi like, oh, no, the devil is a lie. Oh, you're going to go work. Because I'm like, Didi, we're going to take off, mm -hmm. you know, once every other week. She's like, no, we're not. Mm -hmm. You got gigs. Yeah. You're going to go do those gigs, and we'll go and enjoy, like, Vegas. I might have a gig on the 21st, and I got another one on the 26th. Mm -hmm. So she like, we're just going to stay in Vegas. But we gonna, you going to go to work in <laughs> Vegas. And then the days you off, but then let's say December or the end of November when – it's not busy for you, then we'll go to Dubai for two weeks. Yeah. Or then we'll go to, this week. This year she want to go to South Africa. Nice. So she like, yeah. then we're going to go to South Africa. But you don't need to take off for me. Yeah. You need to you need to eat. We yeah. need to get that money. <laughs> That's your money, baby. We need, and so, but before, I'm trying to do vacations and whatever, and Didi's like, I don't, I, who told you I needed that? Mm -hmm. I don't have no problems going to Vegas, and you go leave me, go speak, Come back. We got three days with nothing to do. Then you speak on the fourth day. It's like, I'm cool with that. So I don't think there's balance, but I think it's better when both parties are communicating. And then I think it's priority. 120 on this, and then we go 120. But we don't do 80 here and 40 there. Yeah. We give 120 everything we do, but there's a specific time frame for yeah, that. I love it. What's, what's your thought, like, business-wise, network marketing? Because people have mixed reviews on us. People are like, oh, it's a scam. Is this? What, what's your thoughts on it? Because you've been around. This yeah, space. I think network marketing is really the new, and I shouldn't say new because so, it's been around for so long, but how people look at real estate. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody look at real estate as a scam. Yeah. I think most people look at network marketing as a scam. Bro, I grew up in Michigan, bro. You talking about Amway been around <laughs> forever. Mary yeah. Kay, bro. I grew up in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Like this Tupperware. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like, but I think people are lazy and people get in it to make money. Mm -hmm. And when they don't make money, they want to make the industry wrong. Yeah. It's an industry that cuts out the middleman. Yeah. That's all it is. They sell service and products. You just don't have to go. And here's why I'm laughing, because nobody's dogging Amazon out. No. Amazon took the place of you going to a Sears and Robot. Yeah. Like, you don't go. The, it, so now Amazon is like, instead of you going there and having to buy all that, we got in the warehouse, you just buy it and we'll give it to you. It's almost network marketing. They just taking over. Yeah. It's just one man who network yeah. marketing. <laughs> so network yeah. marketing is just cutting out, you know, the, the supplier and you becoming a supplier. Yeah. And, I, and what I love about network marketing is, bro, I'm not trying to be funny. Yeah, you can make money speaking. And a lot of you going to make good money speaking. But all y'all don't have the gift mm -hmm. to make. You're not going to be able to be a doctor or a lawyer because you can't pass tests. Yep. Don't mean you couldn't be a good doctor. Network marketing is one of the few opportunities where you don't need to be certified. Yeah. You don't have to be licensed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even a whole bunch of overheads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whatever your membership is. And here's what I like about network marketing more than I like about speaking. Because inside of the culture of network marketing is personal development. It is. Yeah. Like personal development may be as big as mm -hmm. the comp yeah. plan. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so where else are you going to go where people are going to force you to get better as a human? Yeah. So I love network marketing. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, I wish when I was younger I would have been more disciplined in it because mm -hmm. I would probably still have checks coming in. Yeah. Uh, but I found a way to not only – speak, but I found a way through working with network marketing all these years. Shout out to my boy BK with Verve. Mm -hmm. Verve had yeah. me down, mm -hmm. and I learned a lot about myself. Like, yo, he using me to help build his bit. I'm deeper than him than I am to myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, BK yeah. taught me, he was the first one to fly me first class. Wow. He was the first one to put me in hotels where there's a living room, and me, me and my wife got the king suite, and then the kids got the suite like that, I had never experienced that before. So BK taught me who I was, and I looked at network marketing and saw the business model of it, and was like, "Yo, let's go, E." And so I'm real close to the program that I had, a coaching program. Yeah. I'm real close to seeing how <laughs> we could turn that joke into what is it, an MLM? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. I'm real close to figuring out yeah. how to do it where people can, and it's not, 
you know, like it's a real in, uh, 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 model with integrity. But once we figure that out in the next six months yeah. or so, yeah. oh, that joke know. about to be that. Yeah, let me know. I'll help you out. <laughs> I'll be, I'll help me out there. Let's go. I'm so grateful I'm on the bike. See yeah. what I mean when I say the, the, the mentees are, are mentoring the, the mentor. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, one day the E.T. movie's going to come out. Who, who would you like to see cast it as E.T.? I would love to see Michael B. Jordan doing it. He got to hurry up, though, because, you know, even Michael B. Jordan is getting older, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So he got to do it in the next five to ten years. But I, I think he could pull it off. Yeah. I think yeah. I think he can uh, I think he can pull it off. And then, of course, uh, Angela Bassett could play any yeah. female. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So she could play Diddy's role, you yeah, know what I'm saying? I like yeah, that. but um, no, no, I'm – I see it, man. I see it. I'm working on something right now. I'm not working on that part, but I am working on something that takes a snapshot of a part of my life wow. when I was younger. So yeah. we're working on that script right now. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, see it. Yeah, see it. Let's go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So I give you this. We always like to do this to start the start. Olive Garden. Nope. Okay. Chipotle. Ah. Hey, a real friend. <laughs> a real friend. Cheesecake Factory. For Didi. So, yeah, yes. Yeah. And then I called yes. some of my friends because I, I told them about the the, the Super Bowl yes. situation. Yes. And uh I say I called my boy Jay, called my boy Mike. I was like, Yo, what can we do? Okay. So we put something together for you and uh, the foundation. Ah, uh, thank you. you can, uh, thank you. Check that out. The tickets went up. God is already <laughs> blessed. <laughs> He's already there. here. Yeah, then I got to show the camera. But okay. Just look at it for okay. yourself. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let me turn this way to the camera and I'll see it. Wow. Praise God. Yeah, this going to be, uh, this going to get a couple of tickets. <laughs> this going to get a few tickets right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. No, no, no. Listen to me. This is why I said the spiritual part. I just told you, I called some GMs, some A-lists, mm -hmm. because my people called me and was like, E, if we do it the way you want to do it this year, it's going to be, to get double kids, going to be double the amount. Mm -hmm. It ain't even double the kids, it's a few more kids, it's going to be double the amount. And I just was like, yo, relax. Mm -hmm. God, God, yeah. you a miracle tear, which is another chapter yeah. in the book. Yeah. I won't tell you which chapter, but yeah. another chapter of miracle tear. Man, thank you, bro. You're this means a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. this, you want to bless somebody, you don't always bless them. Bless the thing that means the most yeah. to them. And these kids getting to leave the urban community and going to Phoenix and, and going to a game means a, means a lot. And if you don't mind what I'm going to do, I'm going to show this to the world and say, my boys did this. How many of y'all want to match this and help and help? I see you at the Super Bowl. Let's do it. I see you at the Super Bowl, man. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. So let me let me know what we got to do. Yeah. We go. We go come. Yeah. yeah. Man, I appreciate uh, you know, that. Shout out to my boy Jay and Mike too, because they, yeah. they was a part of that. But yeah. um, I told him we'll sit down. So and Mike so. is. Yeah, you met Mike. You went. You went to Dubai. Oh, Mike. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. Mike, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we, yeah. Uh, we sat down. Praise like, uh, God. Yeah, yeah. So, Another men yeah. financial yeah, mentor. Yeah, yeah, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah praise God. Him. And Jay, I, I'll, uh, I'll FaceTime him once we okay. get off here so yeah. you get a chance to meet him. But yes. Love it. And I was like, Yo, let, let's see what we can do, guys. We're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, much love. I really appreciate what you've done in my life. And uh, I know that's a small token, but uh, yeah, I know this is huge. Great, great soil. Yeah. Nobody's ever done anything for us and the kids in the Super Bowl. Wow. This is the first first of of what I believe to be many, and you reap what you sow. So this is God showing me, I got your back, son. I know what your vision is. I actually gave you the vision for the kids. Wow. Now I'm going to give you the provision to go with it. Yeah, yeah, this is big. Praise yep. God. <laughs> Praise God. Love it, bro. Well, I appreciate you coming through, taking the time away from the me. family. Didi, we appreciate you letting uh, them come. You know what I'm saying? Send you some food. Hopefully it makes up for it. <laughs> but listen, this is another episode, the Run to Play show. Uh, you just sat down with the number one motivational speaker in the world. Um, and listen, he is uh, impacting not only this generation, but generations for, for decades, decades to come. And uh, I'm just excited to be able to witness it. So I appreciate you coming in. Amen. Appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll see y'all on the next episode. Run, Run the play. play. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you, bro. Man, that's big, bro. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official Run the Play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's Run the Play all across the world. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like? Run the play.
To come for nothing at all But every day you just wanting it all Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear But believing that your blessing is near Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most But still being